Hello and welcome everyone to StriveScan College Launchpad. We are so excited to have you participating in today's event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today to share more about their STEM programs and their campuses. Each institution will have six minutes to share uh, information about their schools, but they'll stick around for the entire session to answer any questions that you have. My name is Jeannie and I will be your facilitator for the event. Before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping items for the group. First, your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. However, find that Q&A button on your screen. Please use that at any time during today's event to submit your questions to our presenters. You do not have to wait until a certain institution is presenting. If you have questions for any and all of our campuses here, go ahead and use that Q&A button during the entire event. This is one of many different sessions happening. So hopefully you already jumped in one session and you're looking forward to attending another one after this. Keep an eye on the schedule. There are other events taking place later this month and next month as well. And then last but not least, this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash launch. I will put that in the chat for everyone. But first, I am going to turn it over to our first presenter. Kicking it off today, we have Kane University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kirsten Bowens. I am one of the admissions counselors at Kane University. Uh, I will be kicking off the presentation for this evening. I wanted to welcome you all to Kane University and I will get started. All right, so some of you that may or may not know about Kane University, uh, we have four campus locations. So our first campus location is in uh, Union, New Jersey, which is located in central New Jersey. This is our main campus where we have around six, 16,000 students. Um, our second campus location is located in Jer Jefferson, New Jersey. Uh, this is Kane Skyland. So for majority of you that are interested in sciences, technology, engineering, mathematics, this is our um, science hub as well. Uh, down here is Kane Ocean. So this is home for our students that are looking to learn um, near the beach one and also to get their associate's degree from Kane Ocean uh, and a bachelor's degree from Kane University. Our third campus location that I'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes is our full English speaking campus in China. Uh, it's called Wenzhou, China. So our campus that's located in Toms River, New Jersey. This is home to our Ocean County Community College where students have the opportunity to obtain their associate's degree and then transfer into the university to obtain their bachelor's degree. Our second campus is our lovely outdoor campus. Uh, this campus is also a satellite campus as well. This is home to our environmental science majors, our biology majors. Um, this is a beautiful campus that sits out in Jefferson Township, New Jersey. And last but not least, which is my favorite, uh, is Wenzhou Kane University that's located in China. We have around 2,300 active students that are on this campus uh, studying business management, um, anything up from business all the way to psychology. Uh, you can also stay on this campus. You can take your uh, current financial aid tuition and fees and attend this uh, university at a little to no cost as well. Let's dive in a little bit about our campus locations in Union, New Jersey and our academic buildings. Up here to the left is our uh, Heinz Hall. This is home to our College of Business and Public Management. Down here is our George Hennings Research Center. So for any of you all that are interested in biology um, and chemistry, this is our hub as well. Down here is our Nathan Weiss Graduate School. So for all my students that are interested in pursuing their master's, uh, doctorate degree, uh, this is our East Campus location as well. Up here in the middle is our College of Education. So some of you may or may not know, but we are also known for our education program as well. Uh, we prepare majority of the New Jersey State teachers in this program and also have a very hands-on learning classroom experience. Over here is our Liberty Hall. This is home to our history majors. Uh, so if you're interested in history about the university and also just majoring in history as well, this is our building. Uh, this is our STEM honors program, so I'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes, um, but this is going to be basically a home for you. 
Uh, we have a lot of state-of-the-art technology, hands-on learning experiences, a lot of research that's happening as well on the campus. Down here to the middle is our Michael Graves College School of Design. So if you're interested in uh, architecture, um, anything of that nature, graphic design, interior design, this is going to be your major as well. And over here is our Green Lane Academic Building where students have the opportunity to study psychology. So for you, all of you that wanna take out your phones right now to take a picture of the QR codes, uh, we have our College of Education QR code, Call of Liberal Arts, um, College of Central, uh, Center for Science, Technology and Engineering Mathematics, um, our Business and Public Management, and then also our STEM program right here, which is going to be uh, your QR code. And then down here is our Michael Graves College School of Design. So I wanna talk a little bit about our STEM majors. So we have biology, which is our STEM teacher education program. It is an accelerated five-year program. Our biotechnology, molecular biology program, which is again, a five-year program. Our biomedicine, biotechnology, um, our chemistry, computational science and engineering. This is a big program at the university as well. Um, and then also our genetic counseling and mathematics for any of my teachers. With these programs, students must have at least a 3.8 GPA and SATs of at least a 1370. So when you're looking to apply to this program, just um, keep in mind that those are the qualifications. Living on campus, so I'll dive a little bit into um, our campus dining experiences. Uh, we have the Myron Student Center where we have Smashburger, Jersey Mike's, Auntie Anne's, Pretzels, the Cougar's Den, Bamboo, um, outtakes and other outside campus locations as well. My favorite is Chipotle, of course, uh, and also in pizza. So these are um, a bunch of opportunities that you would take advantage of off campus as well. So I'll talk a little bit about the freshman application process. So students can apply online at apply.cane.edu or via the Common App. So this is one of the new initiatives that we've kicked off this year. Uh, we are live with our fee waiver code that applies to the online application and the Common App as well. Um, so you can send your transcripts, your SAT scores. Uh, they are optional this year. So just understanding that we've increased our accessibility to students to have the opportunity to apply to the university um, without test scores. Uh, then also we have review special program requirements that are similar to our uh, Michael Graves College School of Design. Down here is our $75 fee waiver code. So take your phones out, take a picture of this KIST 2022. For any of my juniors, it'll be KIST 2023. Last but not least, scholarships. All students are recommended for scholarships during this time. Uh, and also we have out-of-state scholarships as well for $4,000 uh, and they're renewed every single year. And this is a picture of our full tuition and fees. So please take a picture of this uh, to keep uh, for your records as well. And last but not least, we want you to connect with us. So these are different, um, email addresses and links for you to take advantage of to connect with us. And that is all. So thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kane University. A wonderful way to get us started this evening. We're going to turn it over now to Western Carolina University. Take it away whenever you are ready. All right, thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Susie Swartz. I am Senior Assistant Director of Freshman Admission at Western Carolina University. We are located in beautiful Cullowee, North Carolina, right in the mountains, uh, about an hour west of Asheville, North Carolina, about three hours north of Atlanta and about three hours west of Charlotte. Um, so beautiful mountain location. If you're looking for that small town college experience, that is what we are all about. We're right where the Blue Ridge and Smoky Mountains meet. So uh, if you like the idea of going to school in the mountains, I uh, definitely recommend checking us out and coming to visit. And I'll talk a little bit more about visiting later on in the presentation. We're a medium-sized school with about 12,000 students total. About 10,000 of those students are undergraduates and about 4,500 live right on our campus in Kalawi with se several others uh, living in the immediate area in off-campus apartments that are either within walking or short shuttle distance um, from from the main campus right there in Kalawi. We have students from all over the country coming from 43 different states uh, from the latest uh, numbers from our incoming class. And our average unweighted high school GPA is about a 3.4, average weighted is about a 3.8. 
I want to jump right into uh, talking about our STEM programs. We offer 120 different majors at Western Carolina, and many of those are in the different uh, STEM fields. And I won't read out all of these because I know there's a lot of information on the screen, um, but I'll just briefly touch on each area. We have some fantastic majors in the natural sciences and uh, different programs, um, everything from biology to forensic science to geology. Um, so you would be able to, for example, with forensic science, do a concentration in uh, biology or in chemistry, very awesome science intensive program. We also, for the natural sciences with our mountain location, have a giant natural laboratory right in our backyard um, in the mountains. So we take full advantage of that um, through learning by doing. And I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, we have programs in computer science, mathematics, and you'll notice under natural sciences and math that we have math education and science education. WCU was actually founded as a teacher's college all the way back in 1889. So education is our oldest program and we offer subject specific education programs as well. So if you're interested in being a science teacher or being a math teacher, we have fantastic programs for you that are going to give you the really solid training in science or in math, um, as well as the classroom training that you'll need for that. Um, and then we have some engineering programs, electrical, we have general engineering with several different concentrations, engineering technology, if you're interested in anything having to do with robotics, we have programs in uh, those fields. And then um, in terms of sciences, we also have several health sciences programs, everything from emergency medical care to environmental health, if you're interested in public health, uh, nursing, nutrition and dietetics. Um, so some really great choices for you there. Are, um, if you are interested in going into the health sciences field. I'll share a few highlights and you can see some photos from around campus. I mentioned learning by doing. That is really the common denominator between all of our different STEM majors. We have some fantastic campus facilities, including our um, Health and Human Sciences building that has student uh, labs and just really excellent resources for students, including simulation labs. We have a brand new natural sciences building, the Apodaca Science building that just opened this past year. So state of the art labs, if you're interested in anything having to do with um, the natural sciences, our engineering building and our Center for Applied Technology have engineering labs and other uh, technology labs, everything from 3D printers and um, so things that you can really take advantage of um, early on in your time at Western. And then there's various off-campus labs and research stations that students can take advantage of. Um, we've been, as far as research, in the top 10 for participation in the National Conference on Undergraduate Research since 2006, sending students to a conference to present research so that is something that we put a huge emphasis on at Western Carolina is that firsthand experience research, uh, either through independent studies or through jumping on a professor's project. Um, engineering students, for example, have to do a capstone project. They work with a local company or organization um, on a project that they have going. We had, for example, Within the past couple of years, a group of engineering students worked with a local outdoor center to design an electronic uh, tracking system for their river rafts, which is really cool. So just doing stuff that um, can give back to the community as well in that way um, and do something innovative and new. Internships are required or encouraged for, for a lot of majors. Um, and so that is also another way to get hands-on experience. And if you're interested in the health sciences, we also have a student-run clinic in our health and human sciences building. Lastly, I do just want to touch on a couple of different things. You can see our contact information right at the top there. So if you'd like to follow us on social or contact us via email or phone, um, you can reach us um, that way. If you want to come see us in Kalawi, we would love to have you on campus. We're open for campus tours Monday through Friday. You do have to register in advance online. We also have four open house dates per year. So you can go ahead and um, register for that um, online. Those dates um, are being announced soon, um, but they'll be one in October and one in November. It's an all day Saturday event. And then lastly, if you are a junior this year, our 2023 application is going to open in August, which we're very excited about. Um, we have our deadlines listed there. And just for your reference, just to kind of keep in the back of your mind, if you decide that we are at or near the top of your list, I really strongly encourage you to take advantage of our early action deadline of November 1st, and uh, the final deadline is February 1st. So thank you all so much, and I um, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.
Fantastic. Thank you. We appreciate this presentation, Western Carolina University. Okay, keeping moving along here tonight, we are going to hear now from the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. While they get their presentation all geared up, I want to remind everyone that that Q&A function is live, so go ahead and take advantage. All right, we're ready for you. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you are doing well. I hope you can hear me and see me. Uh, my name is Paul Willaborza. I am a senior admissions coordinator here at UNCW, also a proud alumni of UNCW. Uh, very excited to talk to you all about STEM today because I also was a STEM alumni myself. So um, excited to be here and talk about some of our programs. Similar to our previous presenter, uh, UNC Wilmington is in North Carolina. We are also part of the UNC system, similar to Western. So uh, there are 16 universities in the UNC system, all great universities, we, while Western's on the Western part of the state, as the name implies. UNCW is on the eastern part of the state, and we are the coastal university of the of North Carolina system, being about 10 minutes from Wrightsville Beach and downtown Wilmington. So in a great location, which I'll touch on here in a second. We are also a medium to large size institution or with around 18,000 students, as you can see on my slide here, 15,000 being undergraduates. I always like to say that's the perfect size when it comes to athletic events and sporting events. We feel like a big public university, but when it comes to your academics, we still have a kind of a small personalized feel with our average class size of about 27 students. When it comes to programs and majors you can choose from, we have close to 60 different programs that undergraduate students can go through and an additional close to around 30 masters and PhD programs as well. So there is a whole host of diversity you can choose from. Some of our top majors are on the top right part of your screen here. We are certainly known for our health sciences, our business program, and then also our natural sciences, including marine biology. Marine biology is probably our, one of our strongest programs on our campus, again, due to our location. And we have some top-notch facilities, including our Center for Marine Science, which is a seawater facility, uh, multi-million dollars opening earlier this decade, um, and was uh, it really has uh, seawater vessels, um, aquaculture facilities and, and on-campus research labs for students to take advantage of. So it's a gorgeous space. We have virtual tours that you can check out as well, but I'd certainly recommend that if you're interested in anything, oceanography, uh, marine science, natural sciences like that. Outside of those courses, we also are very popular in biology, chemistry, uh, computer science, and psychology as well. So you really cannot go wrong with a major at UNCW. When it comes to applying, in the middle part of our screen on towards the left, you can see some averages in terms of GPA, SAT, and ACT scores. These are our middle 50th percentiles. So 50% of our accepted students last fall were within these ranges here. They're not minimum requirements. You don't have to have these necessarily. But on average, we see a lot of our students falling within these ranges from an academic perspective. Um, it's also important to note, similar to probably the majority of the schools you'll talk to and go through your application process, um, the Tests are optional for the next upcoming year. So if you are a junior um, applying this upcoming fall, um, those tests will be optional here at UNCW. So certainly check that with all the schools that you are applying for. It can make a significant difference on your application process. We have two different deadlines, uh, November 1st and February 1st. November 1st is our early action dead deadline that is non-binding, meaning that if you're admitted, you can still choose another university. And then we have a regular decision deadline uh, by February 1st. Similar to my colleague from Western, um, we encourage most students to apply earlier in the fall if you are interested in UNCW because it makes you more eligible for some of our large merit scholarships we will start awarding in the spring as well. So you can always contact us and, and talk through that process, but we generally recommend applying sooner rather than later. Now, when it comes to STEM programs, uh, a, a huge element that we push across our academic really uh, degree programs that you'll take here is what we call applied learning. And that looks very different from student to student, depending on what you might be involved in. Lots of our students are involved with undergraduate research. And so we have a huge push for that. Uh, I myself did two years of undergraduate research. I, I was involved with publishing a scientific paper. I also uh, did work in the field and uh, actually worked with sea turtles uh, as a junior. So a really cool thing uh, that our process does is get you out in the field and gains you that practical experience. You know, working in a classroom is great and, and getting that foundational knowledge is really important. But you want to know how to take those skills to a field setting. And we certainly do that here at UNCW, whether that be an internship or research experience or part-time jobs you can have throughout your four years as well. We also have a very extensive study abroad program. Um, this has obviously been impacted a little bit by COVID, but prior to COVID, around 25% of our students were abroad every single semester. So it's a really, really uh, popular, popular program. And so we see many, many students going across the globe, whether that be one week for a specific research trip or two years through some of our business programs that allow them to really take advantage of that full process there. Um, finally, the one thing I always like to sell is our honors college as well. We have an extensive honors college program that 
promotes that research and that involvement academically even further. And so as you go through that process, if you're interested in joining a kind of a, even a smaller tight knit community, our honors college can be a great fit for students helping you find opportunities if for employment, as well as scholarships to help fund your college experience overall as well. Um, there's three different ways you can apply when you do apply to the university. We accept applications through the Common App, uh, also through our personal website, uncw.edu, and CFNC, which is the College Foundation of North Carolina. So lots of different ways to apply, and they're all very similar here at our university. And what I'll wrap up with is, of course, we have a few points of pride. Uh, for anyone that's interested in some unique programs, we're adding a lot here at UNCW every single year. We have new programs in coastal engineering, which would be for anyone thinking about offshore drilling, offshore renewables, uh, coastal development, coastal hardening and protections from storm events, um, as well as cybersecurity is a brand new program for us, complementing our computer science and IT programs, and then also a IS engineering, which is, stands for intelligent systems engineering. It's a blend of a computer science and a computer engineering degree, working with uh, kind of smart AI and robotic tech um, development and things along those lines. So hopefully that sparks your interest. If none of that did, feel free to check out our website. Um, our contact information is on the bottom of the page there. We'd love to get in touch with you uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Awesome, thank you so much, University of North Carolina, Wilmington. We're going to keep moving now and hear from Ryder University. We are ready whenever you are. Okay. Um, welcome to Rider University. My name is Anaya Parks, and I'm at Mission Council at Rider University. So are you a Bronx? All right, so join the herd. Rider has about 3,600 students on our campus. We're located in New Jersey. So we're about an hour away from New York, an hour away from Philadelphia, and about 15 minutes shy of Princeton. So Rider University is located in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. So we hold about students from 36 states, two US territories, and 53 countries, all right? Also, 94% of our faculty and staff have the highest degree possible, so you're going to be always be taught by the best. Student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1, and the average class size is about a 17. So when it comes to our majors and minors, we have 70 plus majors and minors. So we have four colleges and they're all on campus. So we have our business college, we have education, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and our arts college. We also have 10 fifth year graduate options for a lot of students that wanna go into graduate school as well. So when it comes to our STEM majors, these are the, um, these are the majors that we offer. We have behavioral neuroscience, biochemistry, chemistry, computer science, which is one of our popular majors now, criminal justice, cybersecurity, geology, health science, you name it, we have it. When it comes to our pre-professional programs, but any students that wanna go into medicine, we have our pre-med program, we have our pre-dental program, and we have our pre-allied health, health program. Also, any student that wants to go into athletic training, you have guaranteed admission to Thomas Jefferson University, our four plus two program. So this is a master's in athletic training. So what makes STEM unique at Ryder University? So we have a lot of hospital internships. Like I said, you're in a great location because down the street is Capital Health and up the street is Penn Medicine. We have New Jersey State Crime Lab. We have Headwaters Inc. We have Bristol Myers Squibb, Johnson & Johnson, then US Air, Air Force. When it comes to field work, all students have unique field work opportunities from riders on Centennial Lake to the Rocky Mountains, to the <laughs> Galapagos Islands, to volcanoes in Hawaii. A lot of students do this when they do their internship. Over 100 plus students and faculty professional presentations each year. So students are allowed to do research with the professor even the start of their freshman year. So also what makes STEM unique at Ryder, when it comes to research, beginning your, fr your first year, you'll have the opportunity to get hands-on experience when working in the faculty. The start of your freshman year, that start of the semester, you're getting in a lab opposed to waiting. So you're gonna get lab experience, pipetting, doing research, lab reports, and so forth. Approximately 20 students work full-time in research, research facilities each summer, earning a salary and valuable experience. Also, 50 plus students perform independent research and work with faculty in the lab in the field each year. About $1 million in active research grants from NIH and NS 
NSF in the areas of immunology, department biology, neuroscience, environmental microbiology, ecology, and also mathematics. Even when it comes to our graduates, they're pursuing their PhD in fields such as biology, evolution, ecology, neuroscience, and so forth. Now, we just redid our whole science and technology center, all right? So any freshman that's coming in at a great time, juniors coming in, you're coming in at a great time. Why? We have more computer science labs because our computer science is actually one of our popular majors now. We have more anatomy and physiology labs. We have more chem labs. Anything that you need, it's going to be in the science and technology center. So how do you become a Brown? So important dates I want you guys to remember. November 15th is an application deadline. We are early action and we are non-binding. Our trustee scholarship, which is awarded to 10 recipients, our BFA in musical theater and BFA in acting. When it comes to January 15th, preferred freshman deadline for scholarship um, application. February 1st is priority deadline for filling out the FAFSA. And May 1st, of course, is enrollment deposit deadline. So you want to take a next, uh, your next step, go to rider.edu slash apply. Now, how do you become a Brown? So when it comes to academic averages, the incoming class of 2021 was a 3.4 cumulative GPA. SATs is 1120, ACTs are 22. But good news, don't be, take anxiety or be stressed. We are test optional. You always pin test optional before the pandemic. So you have the option of going the test optional route or submitting your test scores. Now, we have a new initiative called Lifting Barriers. So opening access to a valuable rider education to everyone. So undergraduate cost of attendance for the total tuition is 35,000. So with that, we had a 22 reduction rate in our cost of tuition. Also, we have strategic investments from the Career and Development Success Center for Diversity and Inclusion, for Center for Diversity and Inclusion and also Student Navigation Office. So when it comes to scholarships and grants. So the trustee scholarship, like I said, it's awarded to 10 full tuition scholarships. So a four-year value apply by November 15th. We have our presidential, provost, deans, founders, and recognition. So stay in contact. If you want to go on campus, you can register an in-person tour. We have an open house coming up April 24th. You can connect with a admissions council or also follow us on social media. This is my contact information. My name is Anaya Parks. You can follow me. You can call me at this number, text it, or even email. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Writer University. All right. We are going to hear from our last institution for this section of tonight's event. Uh, up now, ready for us, is Johns Hopkins University. Take it away. All right. Thank you, everyone. So, uh, I want to present a little bit about Johns Hopkins University. So my name is Ben Gutierrez. I'm assistant director of admissions here. Uh, and really just a few quick things for you all to know about Johns Hopkins uh, before we get started. So we were founded back in 1876 um, as the first research institution in the United States. Uh, and we were founded on this mission of creating knowledge for the world. Um, a little bit about us generally, we are a private research institution and we're about a mid-sized university. So we have about 5,300 undergraduate students, uh, 1,300 students per class, and the average class size is around 22 students. Uh, one of the things, or I guess three things that we really want to share with you all today that we want you all to leave knowing about Hopkins is a little bit about our flexible interdisciplinary liberal arts style of education, uh, the second is a little bit about the hands-on learning research experiences, and then the last is our location and community, which all come together to really create a really holistic experience for our students. Uh, the first of those is that flexibility. So we have two undergraduate schools here at Johns Hopkins. We have our Whiting School of Engineering and our Krieger School of Arts and Sciences. Uh, but when you apply to Hopkins, you actually do not need to apply into a school nor a major. You have a lot of flexibility and students have until the end of their second year to declare a major. So uh, that also applies to students interested in the STEM area. There is a lot of double majoring and major minoring even across STEM and non-STEM areas. And so if you are a student 
who is interested in combining things like computer science and cognitive science, if you're interested in combining neuroscience with a minor in something like music, um, that is something that you are able to do. And we feel that that really encourages students to think critically and think about issues from a very global and interdisciplinary sense. Uh, the second piece that we really wanted to highlight is the research experience. So this is probably something that we have been known for since our founding. Uh, since our founding, we have really grown as an institution to various different parts of the world, especially in the mid-Atlantic area. So we are in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, and a lot of these institutes are either located in Baltimore or in the Washington, D.C. greater area. Uh, a lot of these are really excellent opportunities for our students to do research at the highest level. Students are doing research as early on as their first year here at Hopkins, and it's incredibly accessible because of the funding that we have available. So we do lead the nation when it comes to research spending. So if you have your own ideas for a project, if you want to go abroad for research, we have a couple of students working for CERN in Switzerland, which is doing nuclear research. We have a, one of our students is going to Stockholm, Sweden to work for the Karolinska Institute, which is a notable STEM institution. And a lot of these students are getting grant funding to pay for flights, to pay for stays. Um, students are working at the Johns Hopkins Hospital doing research in cancer therapy methods and immunology uh, in our School of Public Health. So if you are interested in the health sciences or the engineering tracks, as I'm sure many of you all are, those are opportunities that our students have. You can see here that we have a large number of female in STEM and engineering as well. So for any of you all who are women STEM students, uh, it's a really great place uh, for you to study anything that you're interested in here. I mentioned that research piece and about 80% of our students are engaging at that high level, working with professors in labs. They're some of the most uh, that are leaders in their fields. And then you can also see here the flexibility and the diversity of academic interests on campus. So you're not just going to be around STEM students, but you're also going to be interacting with our writing seminar students, our history, our uh, international studies students as well. And that really creates a very enriching experience. The last piece is our location and just where we are in terms of our community. So I mentioned we're in Baltimore, which has a lot of great things that you can find in a big city, being one of the oldest port cities in the United States, a lot of history, a lot of great things to do, festivals, sports teams like the Orioles and the Ravens. And then you'll notice that Hopkins is right up, you'll see that bell tower up there, the Homewood campus, you see it behind me. You still have a chunk of green space, a quad of red brick uh, buildings, which are the quintessential collegiate look. Um, but you have that within that smaller city feel, or I guess that larger city feel um, when it comes to Baltimore. So a lot of great opportunities to explore. We're also only just a few miles away from Washington, D.C., and you can get down there with an $8 train ticket. Um, the campus itself is a vibrant 24-7 community. It's 140 acres of continuous space where our students are all living and learning. So you'll definitely have that quintessential, as I mentioned, college experience all being in one place, living in residence halls and also around campus. Uh, and then lastly, it all comes together really nicely, the research, the flexible learning, as well as the uh, community experience. Our students are going off and doing incredible things because of that advising, that support, that community of students who are really passionate and curious about finding and making discoveries that are going to change the world. Our students are intensely curious and wanting to make that change and that impact. And so, as you can see, a lot of them go off and do really, really amazing things. And we are supporting students throughout the way uh, just due to that kind of smaller, more hands-on advising and support network. So if any of you all are interested, we have a number of resources on the admissions process, a lot of admissions tip workshops and videos and resources like our Essays That Worked page, which you can find on our apply.jhu.edu page. But we hope you enjoyed the presentation and I know that a few questions have started rolling in. So I wanna make sure we can all get to those now. Wonderful. Hey, thank you so much, Johns Hopkins University for wrapping up this portion of today's event. We are, we still have more to do here though. So I'm going to ask 
all of my colleagues to join me on video here. We're going to move into uh, Q&A round robin portion. Uh, just for clarity, the Q&A function on your screen is still live, so feel free to use those. But we have a few questions that we're going to ask all of our uh, presenters to answer here to help you learn more about their, their programs as well as the search process. So getting us started today, our first question is, what is one thing that you want students to remember about your STEM programs? We'll go in the same order. So Kane University, take it away. Thank you so much. Uh, so one thing I want you all to take away from today um, is our STEM Research First Initiative. I didn't get a chance to really dive too deep into it, but our STEM uh, Research First Initiative is an innovative curriculum that allows our undergraduate students to engage in authentic scientific research. So students have the opportunity to learn under the mentorship of our faculty research scientists. Uh, once they become a part of the program, they'll then have an opportunity to um, get more involved in the program with uh, problem solving in science, not through just standard classroom lectures, but also actively applying the fundamental science principles um, that they've learned in their textbooks in real time. So that's one of the things that I wanted you all to take away from our program. Yeah. And for Western Carolina, I think um, the common denominator among our STEM programs, just to remember, is we want you to be able to learn by doing, by customizing your experience, whether that is through a research project, whether that's through an internship, um, a capstone project that you're doing with other students, we want you to really be able to take what you're most interested in and run with it um, through that hands-on learning. You have the support of wonderful faculty who can serve as mentors for you, um, as well as students in your major um, who have also um, done some really neat research projects as well. So I think that hands-on aspect and being able to really tailor it to your interests is, is the main uh, thing that all of our STEM programs have. Uh, what I'll add from UNC Wilmington, uh, something a little different, all of what my colleagues here have said is, is excellent. Um, something that is specific to STEM, I think, that I didn't know when I was a, a prospective student is that um, you don't always have to know exactly where you want to be um, when you're starting an undergraduate degree with STEM. STEM is such a, you know, a diverse field, and oftentimes nowadays, a lot of careers do require master's programs as a minimum. Um, so know that your undergraduate degree is the best place to really for you to get that foundation and you want to get as much experience from a wide variety of areas as you can. So look for universities, universities that can offer those different experiences, whether that be research or, you know, internships, job time, part-time jobs throughout your academic career as well. Those are going to be all things that help you find out maybe where you want to take your career and also more importantly, sometimes where you definitely don't want to go with a career, right? Um, and that can be very valuable as you go through that undergraduate experience. Um, when it comes to writing diversity, all STEM, well, all STEM uh, majors, biology, chemistry, you're getting started in a lab early as opposed to waiting. So you may never know what your lab uh, facilitator is doing on the side. I know, for instance, one student, their lab facilitator was a veterinarian. So like I said, you're always going to be taught by the best at writing diversity. And if you want to grasp your material because it's a small classroom size, you're going to learn, you're going to have that at writing diversity. Even when it comes to internships, Penn Medicine's up the street, Capital Health is down the street. We have those partnerships. When it comes to pharmaceutical companies, you have Johnson & Johnson, which is around the corner. So you're going to get all that research at Ryder, and you're always going to be mentored by the best. Yeah, and I just want to round out for Hopkins. Um, I think Paul made a great point about just, you know, sometimes you may not know what you want to do, and I think that flexibility is really nice to have. Um, and so, you know, at Hopkins, one thing to know is that it's incredibly flexible. Um, you know, our students are uh, coming in for the most part as pre-majors, even as engineers, if they think they want to do engineering or natural sciences, there's still that time to explore. Uh, we don't put up any barriers between our different schools or our majors. And so if you come in and want to take courses ranging from psychology to uh, civil engineering to something like uh, writing seminar, you can do that. And then even when it comes to declaring majors or doing research, you can choose other areas of discipline outside of your major. You can do research outside of your major in an area that's totally not related to what you're studying. So if you are very intensely curious and you want to explore even outside of one discipline, we definitely encourage that. 
great advice for everyone here. Um, we're going to keep going now. Question number two is going to take us a little bit away from each of your respective campuses and look more uh, broadly at the whole process. So the question I have for each of you experts here is what is one piece of advice that you would give someone going through this college search process? We're going to go ahead and go in the same order. So we'll have Kane University kick us off again. Thank you so much. Uh, one of the pieces of advice that I want to give to you all today, uh, one, of this, one of the main things that Kane is known for is um, our first generation students, right? I know some of you in the audience, you, this may be your first time going through the college experience. You could be a little nervous. You could be experiencing a roller coaster of emotions, um, but I do wanna just give you some pointers of advice as a first generation student myself, um, is one, do your research, ask a lot of questions, look up your comment, look up your major of interest, um, connect with one of our deans at our university to learn more about your program. Um, at the university, we have an open door policy. Um, I know a lot of schools may say that, but we truly stand on that. Um, so if you have a question about anything, our faculty members are always there to assist you and our deans are super excited to welcome you to the university. Um, our second, I would definitely say is um, visit our campus. You know, it's a beautiful campus location um, and we want you to come up and see it. Uh, and then also just attend an information session um, to learn more about what your interests are, specifically in your major. And then last but not least, just have fun. Enjoy your experience. Yeah, so um, I'll um, add to that. I love um, what Kirsten said about um, asking questions and having fun with it. Um, you're gonna be getting a lot of information um, over um, the time period when you're searching for a college. So um, just finding a way to kind of keep track of it that works for you um, is what I recommend. Um, we recommend that students, for example, set aside an email address like just for your college stuff, um, just in terms of giving you um, one piece of um, concrete practical um, advice that um, you can hopefully use and that will hopefully be helpful um, in that process. I know it's a small thing, um, but having an email address for your college stuff can definitely help keep it all in one place. Or if you already have an email address that you're using, make a folder for all your college stuff because we're all going to be sending a lot of information to you both um, during the application process and um, as you're kind of narrowing down that final choice. So um, if you've got all the information in one place, however you want to organize it, whether it's an email, whether you want to print stuff out and have a physical folder, whatever is going to be easiest for you, um, figure out um, something that um, will help you kind of keep all that information together so that you can also go back to it when you're making that final decision. Um, and so that's something that I think students have um, hopefully found um, helpful in the past as well. Those are all great pieces of advice. Something simple I'll add is start your writing processes soon, sooner rather than later, um, especially with a lot of colleges going test optional um, that you may see and may be on your list. Um, writing components, at least specifically at UNCW I can speak for, have become much more important. So we do read all the essays and all the writing summit, uh, elements that you'll submit on your application. And the sooner that you start that process and start refining those you know, paragraphs, essays, whatever they may be, uh, the stronger they'll be by the time that you're ready to, to submit those applications. So while majority of our applications for next year won't open until late summer, early fall, I would encourage you all to start working on those essays over the summer when you have some free time, if not sooner. Uh, because again, the more you can have people look at them and the more you can refine those ideas, the better they're gonna get. And then we, you can really make yourself stand out from a writing perspective on that application. My advice to any student is actually to visit the college more than once because we see a lot of students that you know, retention rate, they will leave after their second year because they don't like the college and you thought it's not what it was. Um, as a first uh, generation college student, also EOF student, I would say visit the college multiple times. At Ryder, we have this thing called Bronx for a day. So you're a student for a day. You're sitting inside the classroom. You're talking to a professor. You're sitting inside a daily's dining hall. You're getting the gist of being a Ryder student, how a class schedule starts. And always don't feel nervous. We all been through this, everyone on the screen. 
yes, the transition from high school to college is going to be different, but once you set foot on any campus, make it your own. You know, make your four years how you want to make your four years. If you want to stay in your room all day, stay in your room. But if you want to go out, get connected, um, meet different people, and also excel when it comes to your academics, then you do that at any university. Yeah, and I have a, a perfect follow-up to that. You know, we, have, we understand that some universities, you know, you may not have the time to explore and visit all the universities. And so I would encourage students to also, if you can't get, a, get to a school, uh, check out their websites. Um, I know that seems like a very generic response, but we put a lot of time and effort curating a lot of resources and information and thinking about our mission and, mission and who we are as institutions, our values, and we work to put that into our websites same with social media pages. Uh, we are on different platforms. And so oftentimes many of our schools are doing student takeovers and we're showcasing campus and we're posting a lot of really great content out there. So um, especially now that content is, you know, a part of our daily life, uh, definitely use it to your advantage as you're exploring your college options. And um, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us or your admissions officer uh, as you kind of continue with this search process. Fantastic advice from some experts here on the call today. Thank you all so much for sharing this information. Uh, we appreciate you being here. And thank you to all of our attendees as well. We hope that you really enjoyed this session, got some uh, good information and are headed to those websites now, maybe sending some emails to your admissions team. All right. I wanted to follow up with just a few final announcements for this session tonight. Uh, when you close this window today, you're going to get a very quick uh, question survey. Any feedback that you can provide will help us make these events better for you in the future. I uh, also wanted to let you know that this is uh, one of many different sessions taking place today. So there's another session taking place right after this. Check the schedule, jump in and learn about some other institutions. But then also there are additional events taking place later this month and next month as well. So please visit the schedule strivescan.com forward slash launch where you can learn more and find this session recording along with all of the others. Once again, thank you. Have a wonderful evening and good luck. Bye-bye.